Okay, let's get into this short, condensed version of my longer webinar presentation. I'm Martin Wilcox. I'm the Amazon best-selling author of Bulletproof Retirements. I'm a regulated wealth manager and a registered life coach as well. And I want to use all of that experience to help put your retirement on track and give you a bulletproof retirement. So let's get into it. Our clients, in fact, the clients that we look after, secure a retirement without compromise, can have meaningful financial intervention in their children's lives and perhaps grandchildren's lives. And ultimately, they have a plan to pass on their estate safely and tax efficiently down the bloodline. So this webinar presentation is for you if you are at the later stages of planning your retirement or if you're at the cusp of transitioning into retirement as we speak and even if you've retired in the not too uh, distant past we can make massive we can help and make massive difference make a massive difference for you so quick agenda we're going to run through this presentation in about 30 minutes as i say it's my condensed webinar presentation we're going to be focusing on three big huge monumental common mistakes that people make at the critical junction of retirement. I'm going to talk to you about a big problem. Uh, the big problem, just by way of an introduction to it, is inflation. Everything that we buy today, everything that we spend a pound on today in 30 years' time, which is a typical retirement window now, it'll cost approximately £2.50 if the last 80 years are a guide. I'm going to introduce you to my clearer framework. This is a proven framework that I've been building now for the last 20 years. I'm going to talk to you about how that framework can make a massive difference in your life. Okay, mistake number one, big common mistake. People drift through retirement with no plan. They have no idea about the amount of money that's gonna be necessary for them to get through retirement and have a fabulous time and never run out of money or at the other end, pass away with too much and leave their families in terrible situations whereby they have significant inheritance tax bills to pay. Mistake number two is the bad plan. This is where we've entrusted our pensions and investments and ISAs to expensive glossy financial networks or active investment managers who between them typically take 1% more than they should be taking on an annual basis. And just to give that some context, it might not sound like a big number, but 1% on your £200,000 pensions, £2,000 a year. It's 20,000 over 10 years. It's 60,000 over 30 years. But in actual fact, if you'd left it in the pension to grow, it'd be worth the same £200,000 you start with right now today. So it's massive, that just, just from that 1% alone. And then mistake number three, the wrong plan. This is when we trust our estate to solicitors or legal advisors, and they charge quite a lot of money by the hour, and then for documents, and then to review arrangements for you. And more often than not, in my experience, which spans some 20 odd years now, you end up with more or less standard wills that pass everything spouse to spouse and then onto the children or other beneficiaries. In some cases, I do see some life interest trust inclusion within the wills, but more often than not, it doesn't really give the levels of protection that you're going to need to make sure that you've got protection for your bloodline. The reality with your retirement is there's only going to be one of two outcomes. Either you'll go through retirement and the money will outlive you, which is a great thing because then you'll have capital left to put yourself in a position where you're able to pass on your estate to your loved ones, children, grandchildren, or whoever else, or you'll outlive the money, which is not a great place to be because you'll still be here, but the money will have run dry. Does that make sense? They're the two real possibilities. It'll probably be one or the other. The big problem is, of course, inflation. And I always talk about a cost of a first class stamp. Back when I was born in 1972, it was just three pence. About 30 years ago, you can see it was about 24 pence. And of course, it costs over a pound at the time I'm film, filming this webinar today now, this updated webinar, to put a first class letter in the post. So this is significant uplift in the cost of the humble first class stamp. And why is it important? Well, we're all living on average about 10 years longer than we were when I was born. Back then, the average life expectancy was about 72 years of age, and it's about 10 years more today. It's about 82. And in fact, getting to you know 90, no longer uncommon. 
and in fact even reaching three figures is a possibility. It's important because everything costs so much money these days, doesn't it? Am I right? I mean, you'll have personal experience yourself and be able to relate to different things that you have to pay for. I always use the example of my dad. He used to give me five pounds the year after Liverpool won the double. And here we can see that double winning team led by Kenny Dalglish. The year after we won the double, um, we signed John Barnes and Peter Beardsley and John Aldridge from Oxford. And yeah, my dad used to give me five pounds. It used to get me the train to James Street. It used to get me the, I think it was the number 26 bus up the hill. And then it was one pound 80 to get into the cop. And most Saturdays I would ordinarily have a little bit of extra money left over from a paper round and I'd have enough to get a special fried rice from the Golden Sunrise on the way home. So uh, that was always nice. But you know, all of that pretty much on five pounds. And of course, if I take my kids to Anfield nowadays to watch the game, it costs hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So yes, it's perhaps maybe an exaggerated example, but it's not exclusive just to football. Things cost a fortune nowadays, don't they? Particularly if you have children. So, quick snapshot of my practice. Um, the limited company I trade through, Wilcox & Associates Limited, was founded in 2009, but the reality is I started 20 years ago after I left Barclays in 2003 and I joined a network for a few years. And since then I've been building my private practice. And um, as it stands today, we look, we look after 242 families at the time of recording this and within those families we have 323 investors and we manage just north of 140 million pounds now in investment funds and other estate capital. Most of our clients are in central England all the way down to southern England and that's pretty much just because most of our growths come from word of mouth referrals and yeah clearly um, we can go further afield and we do have national reach so we uh, can um, help you wherever you're based in the country. Much of what we do now is remote as well. And we have a specific online service, which I'm gonna to talk to you about shortly. So you can either do it yourself with some remote online help and support from us. We've got a specific mastermind group, which is only available for 50 applicants. That's the do it with you service or our traditional do it for you service, which is kind of the flagship offering, which we've run now for, well, ever since 2003, pretty much when I left the bank, is there for you too. Now, if it's okay with you, I just wanna share a little bit of background as to you know me and how it all came about, because that's in, I think it's important you understand where the service proposition that you can benefit from, the service that you can uh, plug into, which can help you navigate through your retirement, it's kind of all culminated from a whole raft of different experiences I've been through. I joined Barclays in 1989 in July. I'd applied in March 1988, as you can see on the screen now, but they didn't take me on at first and I had to keep writing uh, back to a lady called Sue Billington at personnel department just around the corner. They were based in Tybarn Street at the time. But eventually Sue and her colleague Liz buckled and agreed to give me a job and I started on the 24th of July 1989 in a little Sutton branch and that's the black branch there in black and white we can see. I moved to Victoria Street branch in 93 and then uh, Liverpool University branch and then on to Chester in 95 and you can kind of see this little story of my Barclays background there. But it all kind of changed for me when I um, joined Barclays Life and became a financial advisor in the late 90s and it was uh, when I took on that role I started to really uh, develop my financial planning skills. I had additional experience. I used to uh, tag on to the corporate manager, Malcolm, whilst I was uh, in Liverpool. And uh, he used to take me to this place, the whole yee hole in the wall. And I kind of met all the business customers and it was a bit of an apprenticeship really. You learned how the bank did its business. And it was brilliant because you were really taken through this journey. And it's on that journey that I really started to learn how to look after customers properly. And my contention is that it's no longer there anymore. The banks are just soulless and everything changed, which I'll touch on in a moment. And of course, Malcolm's wise counsel continued in our time at Barclays Chester. You guessed it, at the Marlborough Arms. And you know, it's important because all of this stuff really um, helped to shape my, my offering as it were. I joined Barclays Premier in the end and uh, Premier Banking back when I started in 89. Crikey, if you told me I was going to be a Premier Manager, I'd have snatched your hand off and signed up for life. But by the time I got there, 
in in the early 2000s it really had I think um, lost its edge and I'm sure people out there watching this presentation would probably be nodding now because it wasn't so much it wasn't as premier as it was when it first kind of you know um, it was built for the um, high net worth market um, in the banks anyway uh, I resigned in 2003 and that's a copy of the letter that I sent to my area director and I, in that letter which you can probably scan in on or zoom in on now in this webinar I won't talk you through it but I kind of set out my rationale really and my reasons for why I was leaving and it's all important because it's helped me build my service it's almost a private office private banking service for the masses you don't need hundreds and hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds to plug into my service this is a full financial planning retirement private office service if you will which is extended to many now because of the remote nature of it and i have this seven point framework with uh, clarity sessions with lifestyle financial planning sessions with uh, investment evidence-based investment session, an allowance session, a risk management session, and then an estate session, and then on to reviewing your arrangements. And it's a collective process. We run on a 12 month basis, and it's this process which is gonna help you get through retirement in one piece with a plan, without high costs from those networks or high cost active fund managers, or with a wrong plan, which you know, see, would see you with the wrong type of legal structures, which are very basic and won't protect your bloodline. Just going to break at this point to sketch out how the whole service proposition comes together. This is me introducing my bucket concept. I'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes. Okay, what we're going to do is sketch out exactly what financial planning looks like. The concept I touched on in the webinar presentation. Here's what we do. And by the way, before we start, I should just say that um, about 14 years ago, we uh, brought in an external consultant called Paul Armson, um, who's from the Midlands. And Paul came and spent a whole week with us. Throughout that week, we were able to conceptualize basically all of our planning. We uh, actually borrowed the money to cover his consultancy fees too, but they've paid us back a hundred times over since. So let me now sketch out exactly how we plan with people. We will work with you on the basis that you are a financial bucket. It seems a bit strange initially, but stay with me. And in your bucket, you'll have what we call ready realizable assets and that's your cash that's your savings that's the money you can kind of go and get your hands on today if you needed to access it and that's great now that's not the only thing going on with your bucket because every month or every week you'll have what we call current inflows and your current inflows at the moment might be a salary for yourself, it might be a salary for your partner, it could be dividend income, and there might be other things as well on top that you receive, and they are going into your bucket on a monthly basis. They might not always be there, and at some point in the future, you may also replace your current inflows with future inflows touch on those at the moment now that's all very liquid you can get it whenever you need it but that's not the only thing going on with people generally speaking and their financial buckets now most people also have assets and investments now in the terms of assets one of the biggest assets we have tends to be our house our property and whilst it's an asset it can also be a liability it has a mortgage on it it has maintenance costs that need to be expended from time to time and that's great and it's an asset and it's part of your asset and liability statement your balance sheet if you will but you can't quite access the money in it just quite as easily as you can with this stuff here in your bucket so it sits outside in a similar way many of you will have pensions and your pensions again whilst they're an asset they're not perhaps available to you in the same way that your readily realizable assets and cash is here okay now for many of you there will also be a business which i always draw as a factory for some reason it's a habit 
and the business that also has a value in it, but you can't quite maybe perhaps always access the value in your business from a capital point of view. There may of course be uh, dividends coming in from the business into your bucket on a monthly basis, and if so, great. And they're the kind of dynamics. You've got this capital that sits inside your bucket and you've got assets that sit outside your bucket. And of course, in the future, you know, you might turn a tap on in this pension and you might drip some income into your bucket. And you may also take, by way of an example, 25%, one quarter of that pension. And that can also come into your bucket too as a future inflow. And that's what we were talking about here with future inflows. You may also, downsize at some point, move house, downsize. And if you did that, some of that capital from your property might also find its way into your bucket too. And you might sell your business or you might just take increased dividends or you might do some form of earn out. And one way or another, you'll pass some more direct capital directly into more readily realizable money down here. On that basis, you would think, well, looks pretty good our bucket is just going to fill up but buckets don't just fill up do they because over here we have a tap and rather than putting money into the bucket as these do here this tap is taken out of the bucket and this is for example you know the cost of our lifestyle today this is our lifestyle tap this is our bills this is our food and drink. This is our holidays. This is the kids, the grandkids. It's all of today's expenses. It's everything that we do today, entertainment, and it's the cost of our lifestyle today. Now there'll come a point in the future when this tap really takes shape and it starts to develop arms and legs and grow at an even faster rate than it is at the moment. And it's the tap you'll turn on where you decide to slow down and start to do all the things that you want to do with your life when you retire. This is your retirement tap, lifestyle tap two. And it's kind of this one, but in a bit of overdrive. And yes, the may, maybe the mortgage may have been paid off by this stage and maybe the kids um, aren't as financially dependent anymore. Uh, subjective always of course and many people will tell you that the kids become more expensive as they get older um, but whatever the case this is the tap you'll turn on at retirement the, the second phase of life tap as it were and you know in my experience it can be this tap multiplied by two and why shouldn't it be this is the tap you turn on when you know you go to Europe more your holiday more you travel more and so on and so forth but there'll come a stage, there'll come a time where you turn that second tap off too. And when you do turn this tap off, you're likely to turn on this third and final tap of your life, which is a little bit smaller because this is the tap you turn on when you can't go trekking around Europe and holidaying three and four times a year and doing all of those great things and jumping out of planes and so on and so forth. And then ultimately, we're all heading for our afterlife. I can tell you that there's only one of two things that will happen to you and your financial bucket. You will either go through your life here and here and here and what's coming into the bucket might not be sufficient to drive those lifestyle taps. So in other words the bucket might run down, it might just run out and if it was to run down that would be bad because it would mean that you'd have to turn these taps down and possibly in uh, in the worst case scenario even off altogether and just have a very very basic existence but there's another thing that can happen you might do very well and the bucket might fill up and if the bucket does fill up it could overflow and if the bucket overflows and you go to your grave here with too much money in your bucket what that would mean is there's a high chance that Mr. Inland Revenue would be receiving 40% of your entire estate over your nil rate bands, either 650,000 or a million if you get the residential elements. 
and that would be bad because after working hard all of your life and paying tax on all of your salaries, paying tax on all of your dividends, paying tax on your business profits, and indeed everything else you've ever done with tax and tax on fuel and kind of everything we do is taxed, isn't it? To pay 40% away to the government would be bad. But there's something much worse. And it's this. If you go to your grave with too much money in your bucket, with an overflown bucket, what it would really mean is that you probably didn't do all of the nice and really great things that you could have done here while you had the chance. And now it's too late, you've gone to your grave with too much money in your bucket and literally no time to spend it. And the job of a proper financial planner is to do one thing really, and it's to help his or her clients make sense of what's going on with their financial bucket. It's to get a grip of all this stuff. And that's what we do. If you've enrolled on the course, we have a very useful tool to help you put all this together. We can do it on our mastermind sessions as well, but the course itself gives you this fabulous PDF handout, which incorporates these taps. It helps you get to grips with what these taps look like. You're gonna to record today's lifestyle, you're gonna record your stage two retirement lifestyle, and you're gonna record the lifestyle tap that comes into action when you start to slow down too. And it's by working out those taps, you'll find your number. And it's that number that we will look to achieve and maintain such that you can run your retirement in whatever way you want and not compromise on any of the really nice things that you plan to do. And that's the job in this lifestyle financial planning part of the program. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that quick uh, session. Uh, clearly that is um, a lot more emotive, if that's the right word to use, when it's specific to your own situation and circumstances. Clearly I can't do that now on this one too many presentation, but be assured when it's your stuff going into that bucket and we're talking about your life taps and what's important to you and the kids and the family and what you hope to achieve for yourselves through retirement and indeed for them, it does become more real. As I alluded to earlier, we can either give you a program where you can go off and do all this yourself, that's one option. We've got the Mastermind program, which is just for 50 people. We can't physically run it for any more people than that in any one time. And then obviously there's the flagship one-to-one -one core service, which we've been running for many, many years now as well. The first session, the Clarity session, I mean, you know, have you ever just looked up and wondered what on earth is this all about? I mean, I believe we're here for a good time not a long time and we should make the most of it and my contention is that when people plan for retirement um, in the early phases and certainly as they push towards transitioning into retirement transitioning into retirement can almost be retiring we plan to retire and then we retire into this big void there's you know we retire from something into nothing and it can be dangerous because we can have far too much time on our hands and things can go horribly wrong there are examples I know of personally where people have just spent their entire lives in golf clubs and so on and so forth and uh, get into a whole lot of trouble, drink too much and other things too. So describe a life that is richly yours. Now, this is the first question of three that we go through on this clarity session. You get access to the others as we push through time. Once we know what we want to do with our life, it's important to work out those taps, the cost of it, how much is it gonna cost from you know retirement to say age 75, from 75 to say 85 if you like, and then from 85 to 100 maybe perhaps. What are the three phases of retirement? What are they gonna cost? Let's start thinking about it. When I was 40, I uh, really uh, kind of decided I wanted to fly planes. You should be thinking about what you wanna do. Let's retire to something and work out how much it's gonna cost. These old Piper Tomahawks are rickety old things that have a Volkswagen Beetle engine in the front of them. I like homing engine. It's amazing, really, that they're able to get off the ground, but they do. But do something you enjoy. And I use this as my own example just to, you know, paint pictures. On my bucket list, and it's probably going to be when I'm 60 now, I did want to do it when I was 50, but we didn't. We couldn't. Uh, we couldn't work the kids out logistics. 
and so on and so forth. But anyway, you know, the Venice Simple and Orient Express from Paris to Istanbul, the flagship journey that the Belmont Group only do once a year, you know, that's what I would like to do. This is the type of stuff we need to talk about. Let's start building these plans into your bucket and thinking about how we can cover the cost of them because life's not a rehearsal. We need a good engine to help our plan work and in my mind that's a low cost evidence based investment and we do our investing through a firm called Dimensional who was set up in the 1980s and their foundations are built on Nobel Prize winning research and data from leading academics like Eugene Farmer and Ken French and Robert Merton and other people like them too. So we've got a superb institutional class investment solution that is not available to you as a retail client in the absence of having a dimensional affiliate like myself. Just by way of an example, if you were to uh, just take off, say that 1% of the active manager's costs that you might be paying for now, it can make a huge difference. If you look at global equity markets, and not, not all of you watching this will be exposed just to global equity markets, but if you look back in any decade in the last 10 with our data from Dimensional, you'll see that global markets have returned approximately 10% as an annualized compounded return. Now, if you factor in inflation to that, you might end up with approximately six and a bit percent compounded on an annualized basis. Now, on a £200,000 pension pot over a 10-year period, so we're not even going into 20 and 30 years now, which is you know more, more realistic for a, a typical retirement window now, your 200000 would grow to about £372,000. Now, clearly that's not going to happen if you're paying away too much in fees. However, what we do is tilt to two very specific classes of equities, which have delivered a premium over main markets which have performed at around 10%, and we're able to achieve higher expected returns at about the 14% mark. And if you factor in inflation again, you're coming away with just under 10% as an annualized compounded return. And on your 200,000 pound pension or ISA, that's gonna to grow to about half a million over the same 10 year period. So I just caveat that with the typical investment risk warnings, which you'll see at the back end of this presentation. It's just to paint pictures as to a generic situation that you could find yourself in. So it's just food for thought at this point. The next phase of my program is allowance and tax planning. Now we don't do any silly tax planning. Why? This is why the evidence is there for you. How many times do we see people in the public eye getting into trouble with silly tax schemes that just don't work? We've never done them, We've never, we never will do them, and we'll never support any clients who have them. It's just not possible for us to run a simple relationship when silly th esoteric you know, investment schemes or tax avoidance schemes are present in the background. The risk mitigation session is really, really important. This is where we're looking at protecting business owners if you've got businesses and companies. This is where we're looking at protecting the family units, particularly young children or other financial dependents. There's no point having you know, a basic insurance policy for a hundred or a couple of hundred thousand pounds bought from a comparison website. It's just not gonna fit the bill in most cases. What you really need to be doing is aligning the risk mitigation, in other words, the amount of cover you have against pr premature catastrophe scenarios like you know, early death or early uh, premature illness. The amount of cover you have really needs to be linked to the bucket. So in other words, what's that annual lifestyle expenditure tap look like? How much are you gonna need in your bucket to drive that ideal lifestyle? Because your family are probably still gonna need that if you're not to be here. So it's a very, very useful cross check and making sure that everything's joined up. I touched on estate planning and the wrong plan earlier. We need to make sure you've got the right plan. Now more often than not, that incorporates structured wills which have provision in them to pass your estate to loved ones, children or you know charities or good causes safely. And by that, you can't just leave the money to these institutions or charities, good causes or indeed your children. There has to be a certain structure in place which allows them to benefit from the capital and income from your estate without owning it outright. If you pass a big chunk of money to your children, what are they going to do with it? They can either get into trouble with it if it's a big sum of money, and that can happen very quickly, and I'll leave that to your imagination. But the other thing that can happen is they can all of a sudden become vulnerable. They can become attractive to the wrong kind of people that perhaps 
wouldn't ordinarily be interested in them. And again, I'll let you just work that out for yourselves. Rather, more, moreover, far better to allow them to have access to the money in the estate, but on a controlled basis. Why do we run a four program review system? In the past, I mean, I can remember in my Barclays days, we'd meet clients once a year, have a coffee, have a cup of tea, uh, have some lunch sometimes, and we just talk about the family. No problem, all good, and we still do all that stuff naturally. But we have a structured review process in place. In March, we'll look at the risk and estate elements to make sure that they're up to date. In June, we'll have a half year cross point. That's really, really important just to touch base. September, we wanna be looking at those clarity and lifestyle elements. That's simply because we wanna be going into the new year with plans. We don't wanna be you know, scraping over the line in December and then just starting to think about what we wanna do for the following year. It's important to do that at least 12 to 15, 16 weeks earlier. And in December, we wanna be looking at the evidence-based investment proposition and solution we offer alongside the tax allowances that you should be utilizing. And that's because we've got about 12 weeks before the following April when the tax year flips over. So we need to start planning for those things in December. Now, a couple of old beliefs, big is best. This is the largest financial network in the UK. They've got just under 900,000 clients, about 4,500 advisors and 154 billion under management. Now on the right, you can see a cutout from the company's house data I was, I was able to source. It talks about their expenses and it talks about their property costs. They have fleets, these networks, they have fleets of flagship, flagship, flagship officers up and down the country. And my contention is that that extra 1% a year that they charge is paying for all of this unnecessary excess. It's covering the cost of flagship officers and it's covering the cost also of managers and directors and other partners who support the advisors. Now I've no problem with your advisor if you're with a big network being paid your advisor should be paid. But I know from my own experience in 2003 all the way through to 2006, I had a, when I was with the network, I had a manager, the manager reported to a local director, the local director reported to an area director, the area director went to the board. There's all this excess fat in the system. It's a big pyramid. And I don't think you need it. I think if you work with an independent private office professional like myself, who's regulated exactly the same way by the Financial Conduct Authority, who has you know, the same pro rata levels of professional indemnity insurance, who contributes to the financial services compensation scheme levies. There's no difference. You, you're dealing directly with me. All I care about is you. <laughs> if you're in, with a network, you've got so many other things to worry about in the pyramid, and that 1% covers it. And this network in particular, in its last financial year, spent 500 million pounds on office costs and staff and you're paying for it. That's what the 1% costs. That's what the 1% cost goes towards. It's no wonder Andrew Croft, the chief executive of St. James's Place, says, I'm very pleased to report St. James's Place has had an excellent year. No shit, Sherlock. They have an excellent year every year with your 1%. Take it back. It's your money. It's, it's 2,000 pound a year on 200,000 pounds. If you've got £500,000 with them, which some of my clients did have, you're paying them 5000 a year more than you need to. You don't need to pay it. It's 50000 over 10 years, 150000 over a 30-year retirement. But in actual fact, it's the same 500000 you've got today if you just left it to compound. Take it back. This is our private office, which we're just having a look at now. It would be remiss of me to not point out that I'm a corporate sponsor and, and ambassador for Save the Children, a charity which is very close to my heart. I took my kids and family with me when I signed up as an, as an ambassador because I wanted them to, but they're lucky, and I wanted them to you know, see what I was doing and why it was important to me. And the point for you is, every time we take on board a new family, something great happens to the kids in the world too who so desperately need our help. They are our future and our hope, and it's criminal to see how some are treated, not just in our country, but globally. So, you know, I do a little bit to help there. And yes, um, it's great to have real life examples. The free brochure that you will have received in advance of watching this presentation will have showcased a lot of the 240 families we look after. And yeah, just in terms of the investment solution that we touched on as well before, as Nigel himself said, 
it is a or is was rather a no-brainer so brilliant oh belief too it's complicated guess what it's not complicated at all we have a set investment model which we build through dimensional and we also use albion as an in-sourced investment committee to sit behind us too and they just act as a safety net a sounding board we've got a really simple system it's the same investment solution we give to everybody it's where our own family money is invested as well and you can benefit from it too once you're on board oh belief three the professionals know best i don't think they do this is an email between myself and michael a, a good trusted friend and colleague of ours who's a who's a serious player in the estate planning market michael and i reviewed a, uh, a will arrangement for a client who was about to come on board cheryl and quite frankly quite frankly it was a 62 page clause which was gonna just rinse her a straight her estate dry it was really quite damning and in, in my mind you know, sometimes maybe perhaps think, oh, I better get my solicitor to do wills and arrange my estate plan. I think it's better to have your financial planner do it. It's a personal, you know, choice, of course. But I think if you've got the financial plan, the investment plan and the estate plan running in harmony, it's all joined up. And I just think legal plans and estate plans can become very disjointed if you've got an outside party just working on it. And I've got lots of examples of why that is the case. Um, another one from Andy, you know, he went to a big firm of lawyers. He ended up with a business trust in a stand, more or less standard will with a life interest. In the process of exploring a sale for the company, the business trust he was given wasn't going to be really of any use to him. So we've done quite a significant job uh, for Andy in terms of a series of structures which really form our entrepreneur and executive estate and succession plan which most of the time the documents are fairly standard. Uh, it's what we do with them over time, which counts as the family de situation develops. So what's next? Well, you've already had your clearer cheat sheets and you've got the life plan questionnaire. We touched on the first question earlier and you've also got access to my bucket presentation and indeed the tap recorder too. So you can start to work those tap costs out, which is crucial for retirement. If you think you're good to go and you want to have a go yourself, that's absolutely fine. Do get a copy of my uh, Amazon best-selling book. It was a uh, number one bestseller in personal uh, risk management, personal retirement planning, and uh, personal finance. So, you know, um, lots of helpful tips and uh, guidance in there. And frankly, if you followed most of what I talk about in the book, you wouldn't have a terrible financial plan at all. I think you'd have a fairly good one. I think it is important Frankly, if you get a bit of help, it can make a big difference. I'm a big believer in that, which is why we have the Do It With You program and the standard Do It For You program too. If you just want to take all of my uh, knowledge, which has been built up over the last 20 odd years, in fact, the last 33 years, because even my time at Barclays was building the foundations for what I believe, what I know, and how I help people plan, I'm happy to offload that information to you for a fixed price of a thousand pounds. I think it's incredible value. You've got a series of guides, you've got a course workbook, you've got my seven point investment plan, my seven point estate plan. You've got the whole range of uh, document uh, access as well. And you've also got my online financial planning software tool, which brings that bucket to life. So that in itself is a fabulous, fabulous service. I also include with that our portfolio analysis. So if you want us to review your arrangements and give you that uh, initial evidence-based investments x-ray on your current pensions and ISAs, happy to do that within that um, fee too. We offer a mastermind, as I mentioned a few times now, for 50 applicants. Uh, you have to apply for this as well. We'll do it all with you over seven sessions. So each one of those um, clearer, the framework I use, which I've adopted over the last um, few years. Uh, we'll run through those sessions with you. We'll do live sessions. You'll have Mary's support as well. There's Mary on the right. And, you know, example of 50 clients who've joined the program in the past are there. And it's kind of the same information and same framework. There's no change. You've just got that handheld in experience as well to make sure, I think, importantly, that you implement it. So it's all very well and good having the information and the ideas and concepts but it's the implementation of them which is key. Implement, implement, implement. You must take action. If you want to come on board as a traditional flagship client, you can do. I'm about halfway now to reaching my cap at 500 families. There's no you know, restriction on me from a regulatory point of view. 
I just run a lifestyle business and running 500 relationships is the absolute max for the structure that I've built into my business. So yeah, clearly there's space for you to join, um, but who knows, uh, if these webinars do well, we might accelerate that a lot quicker uh, than what we've done over the last um, you know, 10 and 15 years, uh, bringing people on. And of course, the starter service costs 6,000 pounds. That buys me, that buys everything else we've discussed, and you've got me working with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, which is relationship-driven, and it also involves some face-to-face -face elements too. That can be uh, one of our offices in Teddington, uh, just outside Richmond, it can be here in Liverpool, or indeed it can be in central London as well. I've also got access to Soho Works, a number of suites throughout the uh, country where we can meet and converse and do our business. So there's a link under this uh, webinar um, for you to go and make your applications. You can choose the I, you can choose the online program, you can choose them to apply for the mastermind program, or you can apply for one-on-one -on -one help and support too. So have a listen to the videos from Andy, from Mary, and from Terry. I've included those on this webinar presentation. You have access to those. They're just very frank accounts from real people who had real problems that needed my real solutions, as it were. And you know, take some heart in the um, you know comments they've made because I think they're really poignant. If you wanted to spread the cost of our programs, you can. There's an additional surcharge of ninety-seven pounds a month. The payments are split into three. They're on the screen there. You can see exactly what they're going to pay. So you don't need to cover the cost all in one go. I'm that confident you'll love what we do. I'm that confident you'll tune into Mary's support on the mastermind. And I'm super confident that if you engage me directly, you won't be dissatisfied or disappointed. 242 families can't be wrong. And I have to say, in the last 20 odd years, I think I've lost two clients over that entire window. And there were very specific reasons for those um, people moving on as well. So yeah, there's the option to spread the cost. You have a money back guarantee. Now, if you're thinking, you know, it's cost, you know, we can't afford that. I just think there's a cost for you to not take any action. Not having a plan could just see you run out of money in retirement. It could see you die with too much if you're at the other end of the scale and as you saw from the buckets if you die with too much you can leave your estate paying 40 percent so after paying tax on everything you've ever worked for and bought and earned tax 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 all the way you pass away after working all your life and then leaving your children with a 40 percent bill over the nil rate bands which aren't very much as you will appreciate so if it's cost i think it's an investment that will pay you back many many more times over than what its actual real cost is. If you're thinking how long is this gonna take, I've seen courses online for retirement planning, which you have to literally invest half your life into. Hour long meetings, uh, strategy, session, strategy sessions, so many different kind of elements. Each one of those seven sessions lasts for no longer than 20 minutes, and that's because I believe you can get all of the main detail done in that limited time. All of the action takes place in the big detail, not the fluff and the faff if you're with me. So I keep it super simple. If you like working on that basis, you'll probably work really well with me. If you're somebody who likes to spend a lot of time on things, you wanna review, you wanna really consider, you wanna research, it's probably better that you do all that first and then come back to this. I would really recommend you do that. Likewise, if you've got an advisor already, great, fine. If you wanna run by your current advisor, the type of teachings that I've you know, shared with you now, I'd encourage you to do that. I would really encourage you to uh, look for an advisor who's working in all three disciplines, the financial planning elements, you want them to be running that type of bucket concept with you, you want them to be running an evidence-based investment solution which is, at, which is low cost, stay away from active management, it doesn't work in at least 90% of cases, 25,000 papers have been written on it now or thereabouts. And you also want an advisor, in my opinion, who's gonna be able to control the estate succession piece for you as well. It's those blended, you know, that blended trilogy of services, which is gonna make the difference in your retirement. So go to the application page, page even, the link for which is underneath, and I look forward to hearing from you on which way you wanna go. Make some progress today. There's always a cost. You have to pay, you have to invest into yourself. And if you wanna get through retirement, this package is brilliant for you, regardless of whether it's the online information only service, the mastermind or the one-to-one. -one. I look forward to seeing you in due course. Bye for now.